She's smiling all the time. Oh, that's good. Really, that's good it's, it's amazing what I see in her. She was living with us for two years, and I didn't speak any Spanish. Right. But look at that smile. Mm -hmm. So I put it up here. Yeah, right? There you go. It's something good to stare at, to look at. So what I like about his model is that it is immersion. Yeah. Um, the difficulty comes with how do you get started? And I was trying to say, learn from what Nova did. They brought the school to the student at first while they were developing their campus. And in some cases, people really didn't come to the campus that much. Well, remember that my students were not these ages. True. Okay. He's, his ages are sort of 16 and to I 22. And I brought it at the doctoral 25. level. 25. Mm -hmm. So they were entirely different. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to, I sent the professor for where they were. In, they had groups of 25 to 30 of themselves. Mm -hmm. But they had a coordinator who met who forced them to meet periodically to, to be sure that they were gathering and that they were prepared for the for the eight hours on Saturday mm -hmm. once a month. Mm -hmm. So they really only had 24 contact hours directly. But he came on a Friday evening. Mm -hmm. They had dinner with him. Mm -hmm. They had breakfast with him. And in many cases, he didn't rush home on Saturday night. He mm -hmm. stayed till Sunday. Right. So, with 25 students, they were immersed in whatever the content was, but the content was in English. So with it, it's a different kind of an operation. Well, the, the part I heard that whatever you're trying to teach, there is a way to at least bring the university, bring the school to the student in some way. What's the university? The university is the people mm -hmm. and the materials. Well, I bought materials and I gave them the person. Right. And I paid him well. So you would actually, if I, if I get this correctly, you would actually, a group would take, a group would do, a, dis, it was distance learning, but not on an individual basis, but on a group basis? They, they operated 25 or so principals wanted to get a doctoral degree. It was not to get them to become superintendents. It was to get them to improve their ability to function and produce change within the, the structure that they were responsible for. Okay. Most of them were elementary school or secondary school principals. Now, where was this located? Anywhere where I could get 25 bodies. Oh, yeah, so 25 bodies was like, okay. Okay, but they had to have a master's degree and they have to be a principal of a school. Okay. Now, we met once a month by me flying a professor from one of the best institutions I could find, like Harvard and Berkeley and Santa Barbara and other places like that. He went there for eight hours of instruction in his area of expertise. Hmm. Okay. Okay. In between time, they had a person with a doctorate degree as a coordinator. And periodically he would review and substitute for the professor and in reading and whatever they were doing as assignments between his visits. They also had contact with him by technology, either computer or telephone. In the beginning we didn't have computers, we had the telephone. Then he would come out another fr Friday night, teach all day Saturday, and again go home. So he met them three times in three months. Okay. So once a month for eight, eight hours, hours plus, you were saying, yes. for a month. Right. And you had to train these guys not to lecture for those eight hours. <laughs> they, uh, I, no, I trained the two students. Mm -hmm. The students I went out to visit first. Mm -hmm. I told them if he's going to lecture that many hours, forget it. Don't let him do it. It's interesting. You, Don't let him do it. You engage the students to expect something different. Exactly. And I and the professors I hired knew what I because I I hired them. Right. So so these students would have three points of contact. You would go out of I first, I guess just to, just to set the stage. Set the stage. Then you would actually have somebody who was 
an adjunct to us. An adjunct, and they would be, would they be based there permanently, or they would be sort of like a circuit judge? No, no, no. In school of finance, I got Guthrie. Why did I get Guthrie? Because he was funded by, for a million dollars by the Ford Foundation to study the financing of public education. So that was your lead teacher? That was my professor. Right, right. Now, in one program, he would bring in two other professors that he wanted to work with. Okay. And between the three of them, they would divide up their tasks. In some cases, two of them were there, in some cases, only one. And did you give them quite a bit of uh, uh, kind of freedom in what they wanted? Absolutely. Okay. They knew more about school finance than I did. Okay. All right? So I didn't try to run their lives. But they, they understood that they couldn't stand up there and lecture for eight hours. Mm -hmm. That they understood. So it's, instead of lecturing, what, 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 what would they what would Problems, they do? small group interactions, opportunity to do reflective thinking and, and, and reading and studying between sessions. Mm -hmm. The reason we, we did it once a month was because they were, they were principals. They had to work. They had to work. Right. Because they had to pay. Mm -hmm. So we had to give them time because I didn't want them wasting eight hours. I didn't want the professor wasting eight hours. I didn't want them wasting eight hours. So they had to prepare whatever readings the professor wanted them to have and meeting in small groups in between times. Right. In order to solve problems or what if or how would you, etc. So it was partly problem solving, partly lecturing, etc. How many of these small schools were actually up and running, I guess, at the peak? At the peak, the maximum I could have was 32 groups of 25, approximately 25. 32 groups Thank in you. each of our programs. Yes. Thank you very much. Of course, they had to meet three times. That's three months. Right. So yeah. they were able to have three le three three credits. Mm -hmm. Yes. I plus the summer experience where they all came together. In the summer, they came to Nova. They, well, one summer they came to Nova, one summer they went to Washington. I'm acknowledging your phone call. They came to, um, they went to Washington. D.C. D.C. Why, why Washington, D.C.? Because I wanted them to have a different kind of experience in Washington. What was their, what, as in? They dealt with the political process. They heard from people in Washington who were interested in what we were doing. So you actually met with subcommittees and things like this? Yeah. So they went two out of the three years, they had two different experiences in the summer. They had programmed it over here and not with the same professors that they had during the course of the year. And they had a different experience in Washington, D.C. And so you laid out the blueprint for this? Yeah, for the first program, the ADD and Ed Leaders. And, and we had one for the community college professors. And were the other programs based upon the same blueprint that you had? Uh, not exactly. In mine, in the EDD and Ed Leaders, the same three professors taught that, that module no matter where it was taught. Okay. So it wasn't a pickup. Right. They were responsible. They wrote the books somewhere over near my, my other office. They wrote the books. They were responsible for the content and the quality of instruction. Okay. And they taught that module no matter where it was taught. So if they took school finance, they were going to have Guthrie. If they took educational research, they were going to have Subelby. So, and this was in, what's, what, for what uh, classes were these for? Educa for people with a master's degree. And they were studying a doctoral in education. In educational leadership. Now, you said, how many how many groups would you have going at the same time of this? You could have, I would assume... We would have, we could have... With those three professors, you couldn't have any more than three. They, well, we only had three groups in one year. Okay, all right, that was my thing. But then you had different... Disciplines where you had oh, different groups. Had, they had to take nine units. Okay. Three a year, in addition to doing a practicum, 
In the first year, they did a practicum, small practicum, so they knew what a practicum was like. Second year, they could do a small group practicum. And the third year, they had to do the dissertation practicum. Hmm. You can look at all the practicums that are in the library. Now, is this program still going on? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It started in, The first one started in 1971. The second one for community colleges in 72. And the Doctrine of Public Administration in 73. Now, how did you... What... You, 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 didn't, you didn't invent the will, because obviously this technology was there and people were doing somewhat, something like this, people were had to be doing before this time. Because it wasn't certified, it wasn't uh, accredited. But I, it, yeah, I had to take the educational body in charge of our higher education in North Carolina into their courts.